What you are about to hear is a composite of a number of programs recorded on our Children's Bible Hour Summer Tour, 1988. And now, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, let's welcome Uncle Charlie and the Children's Bible Hour. Good evening, everyone. It's our joy to be here tonight. And when I say we are glad to be here, you don't know what's behind that statement. And you wouldn't know unless you've been with us the last 24 hours. We left Grand Rapids, Michigan yesterday afternoon on our summer tour. And we uh, travel on one great big bus that we've been traveling on for the several years. A dear Christian friend who has a bus company in Michigan. Well, we got about 20 miles, only 20 miles down the road, and there was a big bang, and we blew something called an airbag. Fortunately, we were able to arrive in Decatur. We were all tipped sideways because this is the way the bus went down the road. We were to leave. We went from Decatur then to Van Wert, where we were this morning. And we started out on our way here and found that we couldn't move anywhere because the bogey wheels were all hung up. Fortunately, Calvary Evangelical Church, where we were this morning, was able to transport all of us and our equipment and everything here. And so when I say we are glad to be here, believe me, we are glad to be here. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, these things that have happened, we would not choose. But the Lord was with us all the way, and we've made all of our appointments. And another bus is on its way from Michigan, hopefully, by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning when we need to be on our way to Cedarville for our next appointment. The Lord's going to allow us to get there. We're just confident of that. Hey, we want you to sing another song. It's our theme song, Boys and Girls for Jesus. We want you to join our Cousins Choir. So let's stand up uh, one more time. We want to keep you awake tonight. You know, it's a sleepy weather, and we don't want you to sleep. And so the choir is going to sing our theme song, and then you're going to sing it. All right, choir, boys and girls for Jesus, sing it out. Boys and girls for Jesus, Put a smile on your face and sing it. All right, here we go. Boys and That was very good. <coughs> we are on our summer tour. We started last Saturday evening, and uh, last night we were at Cedarville College with well over 1,100 people who joined us for that warm reception over there. And now we're glad that we are here in Coshocton. As we are traveling around, I'm reminded of an old song that Carl's going to start the program with. It's all about a circuit-riding preacher. Now, we've been riding on a bus. Carl, when that circuit-riding preacher went around from church to church, let's see, did he use a Volkswagen, a pickup, or a bus? What do you think he used? I don't know. You don't know? 
What do you think he rode? Volkswagen. A Volkswagen? Yeah. How about a horse? Don't you think it was a, a horse back in those days? Yeah. This is our Carl. He's six years old. And he's going to sing a song all about the circuit riding preacher. Now, we need your help with this song, all right? On the first chorus, you're going to sing, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Now, what's the second ver chorus that they sing? Power, wonder, working power. Power, wonder, working power. And the third one? Glory, glory, hallelujah. I want you to pull out all the stops on that one and really lift it, all right? Carol, you take us for a ride with the circuit riding preacher, all right? The circuit riding preacher used to ride across the land with a rifle in his satchel and a Bible in his hand. He told the prairie people all about the promised land as he went greatest joys that we have of going on tour is meeting so many of the folk who have listened to us for many years. We have been on the air since 1942, so we have second and even third generation listeners. Believe me. Believe me, we do. I met a gentleman out here in the lobby just a little bit ago, and he took a picture out of his Bible, and he said, we have been friends of your ministry for many years. He said, my own children listen. He said, we've got 85 kids that we work with on a regular basis. He said, we use your keys for kids. And he showed me a picture of the keys for kids on the wall. He said, we encourage them to listen to the program every week. And we also use your stories in our phone story outreach. We're so glad that our ministry has such an outreach in so many, many different ways. Pam and Dan are our, du our duetters, and they're going to sing a song that we're going to dedicate to you because we feel we are among God's wonderful people. Listen. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people, what a sight just to see all the happy faces, praising God in heavenly places, what a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I'd rather be than with the ones who 
A lot of times people have said, Uncle Charlie, how do you get the kids that are on your program? Well, I'll tell you, we don't find them under any garbage can. They're a pretty good bunch. They really are. They are special in that they have to try out to be on our program, and we have many more that want to be on than we have room for, and we thank the Lord for that. They do come by audition. The choir are grades 3 through 9. When they graduate from the ninth grade, then they have to graduate from our program. Some graduate just a year early. We're going to be losing about five this summer, and then there will be five new ones that have already practiced with these kids that are ready to take their place. Mr. Ken practices with the choir and the duetters and the trio and other units during the week. The mothers practice with the little ones mostly. By the way, that's Mr. Ken at our synthesizer and Mr. Paul at the guitar. They have been with us for many years, and I thank the Lord for these men and for their partnership with me in the ministry of reaching boys and girls with the gospel. As we're having this sort of family section of our program, I wanted to share something that just came in my mail this week. It was from a proud father. Their family listens to our program. And he said, my 10-year-old daughter wrote this for me for Father's Day, and I want to share it with you. I guess it was especially interesting to me because her name is Leslie, and that's the name of my oldest granddaughter. And so I want to share on this Father's Day, all of you that are fathers, raise your hand. All right? All right. This is especially for all of you fathers. Now, this applies more to some fathers than others because some of us are long past the opening line stages anyway. A father is a special human being. He changes diapers while mother is away shopping. He goes to work for his family so he can supply the necessary things needed. He usually gets the hardest or dirtiest jobs. I love this next one. A father has a lot of patience, especially when his kids want some of his drink, because he's forced to drink out of the same cup that their kid has just slobbered in to get that one piece of ice. A father has to make time, especially when his kids want him to play piggyback or jump over the pillow. A father has to have a great imagination when telling stories. He has to keep his kids in suspense. A father has to cook sometimes, even if all he knows how to fix is pancakes. A father has to wear a coat most of the time, so when his children get cold, he'll let them wear his coat, even though it is very big on them and makes them look like an orphan. A father has to have a sense of humor, so he will laugh when his children tell him dull jokes that he has heard all of his life. A father has to know a lot, especially when his kids ask one million and one thousand questions in 30 seconds and expect answers. Yes, a father is a very special person. Leslie Suzanne Butler, age 10, written June 5, 1988. Let's give all of our fathers a hand in the studio, in the audience, for all that they do for us, and we thank God for them. Now, Jonathan's going to come. He started singing when he was just four years old on the program. Now is of choir age, and this year has joined the choir. And Jonathan's going to give us some good verses first, and then he's going to tell us that if you are a friend of the Father, that makes you a friend of ours as well. All right, Jonathan? That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I'm so happy to be here among you, sharing thoughts with those who feel the way I do. And it thrills me so to join in all proclaiming of the joy that has united me and you. There is no place like home, so they tell me. There 
Now we want you to be involved again on the next song. You see, we like to keep our audiences awake. Don't want any of you going to sleep out there. The kids are going to sing a medley of songs about being in the family of God. And I can't think of any greater family to belong to. Oh, it's wonderful to have our earthly family. It was so great to see so many of you coming in as a family tonight. And I had the opportunity of meeting many brothers and sisters and mom and dad. But oh, it's even more wonderful to know we're part of the family of God. Now, when the choir gets done with this medley, we're going to sing together the chorus, The Family of God. So you be ready, all right? choir now let's stand together and as much as possible even across the aisles join hands with somebody all right now boys it won't hurt you to hold a girl's hand for two minutes hey you won't get cooties all right all right stretch your hands across the aisle young lady you're not cooperating down here there we got one that's willing to hold his hand all right very good i i feel better all right Y'all holding somebody's hand? All right, let's sing that together. I'm so glad. Sing it. God's people said amen. amen thank you you may be seated we appreciate that good singing but now listen to me boys and girls moms and dads listen to me I believe with all my heart that there were some of you right now who sang a lie that's right you've never been born again into the family of God you say uncle Charlie I go to church and Sunday school that doesn't make you a Christian. Say, well, my mom and dad, they're, they're, they're good Christians. God doesn't have any grandchildren. You come to know Christ as your own personal Savior. That's the only way you're born into the family of God. As you accept the water from the rock, Jesus Christ provides. These are our second cousins. Down at this end is Todd, then Lisa, and Carrie, and Stacy. And they're going to sing all about water from the rock. 
That's what I needed. Listen. Wandering aimlessly, thirsting endlessly, all I found was bitter water from an earthly stream. How my soul did cry, how I feared to die, everlasting life was just a dream. Water from the rock is what I needed, water from a snow one is denied. And when I came to Christ for my salvation, I found Jesus was the rock that satisfied. If you're looking for life with something more, there's refreshing water flowing out from Calvary. Leave your past behind, climb God's hill and find heaven's answers for your soul's deep need. Water from the rock is what I needed. Water from the snow one is denied. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock that satisfies. And when the Lord Jesus comes in, there's a change. Just as from night to day, as from an ugly old caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. And that leads me into Melissa's song. Now, you're not going to hold that microphone? No? You mean I have to raise it up for you? Are you too lazy to, to hold this mic? Well, somebody really tightened that thing this time. Are you too lazy to hold that microphone? No. No? Well, why don't you want to hold that microphone then? Because I'm doing sign language. Because you're doing what? Sign language. You're going to do some sign language on this song? Do you know what sign language is, boys and girls? Sure you do. You do, because there are people that can't hear with their ears. They have to hear with their eyes. And so she's going to sign part of this song about the caterpillar. Listen real quietly, because this is a good song. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Hey, little caterpillar climbing up the tree. You've got no idea of what you're going to be. Crawling so slow with tiny little feet. These are all you
That's what happens when Jesus Christ comes in. We're free for all eternity. Free to be what Jesus intended us to be when he created us. But sin came in, in between. And that's why there's rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. And if there's rejoicing in heaven, there ought to be some excitement in our hearts as well. These are our three nieces. If you've heard the program for a while, you've heard these girls. Because Mary, you are a, a, an, an old lady of how old now? Twelve. And you started when you were how old? Three. Three. And uh, Becky, you are? Eleven. And you started when you were? Four. Four. And Lisa? Three. I mean... <laughs> oh, you're three years old? Oh, that's nice. Where... You are? Eleven. And you started when you were? Three. Three. All right. They're going to sing a song that talks about the excitement that there ought to be in our lives and the excitement we ought to have when we share the good news with others. Get all excited. Go tell everybody, Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. Well, speaking about excited, I want to introduce you to Sherilyn, who is one excited young lady tonight. About quarter to seven, we got a phone call. Who was that phone call from? Mommy. From your mommy. And what did she tell you? What was her news? I had a baby. You had a baby? Wow, wait, now that's going to make history. Uh, your mommy had a baby, right? That's why she didn't come on tour this year, because she is expecting a baby all week long. Now, you were, what were you hoping for, a brother or a sister? A sister. And what did she tell you she had? A sister. All right, yeah, that's good. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember what the baby's name is? What? Laura Lee Grace. Laura Lee Grace, weighed in at seven pounds four ounces, born at five fifteen this afternoon. Now, I mean, that is just uh, fresh news. And uh, so, will you dedicate your song tonight to your new baby sister? All right. Do all the motions and get excited with it. All right. Separate. 
Cheryl and his sort of children's Bible hours answer to Sandy Patty. <laughs> but you know, that's how Sandy Patties get started. And uh, incidentally, we've had several who have gone through our ministry who are now in full-time service. Some of you have seen Johnny Hall and Billy Graham Crusades and other concerts. And he once was a youngster just like these over here on Children's Bible Hour. No mountain high enough to separate me from God's love. That's cause to say thank you, Lord. In fact, the Lord does so many things for us. Becky says in her song, there's a half a million reasons to praise the Lord. Listen. a million reasons. Now, one of the reasons that I'm thankful is that as far as God is concerned, I'm not just a number. You know, I think kids kind of feel like left out these days because this is the big computer age and all we are are just a number. I mean, kids that are five years old have to have a social security number already. They can't even say the word, but they got to have one. Oh, I'm glad that as far as God is concerned, we are not numbers. Now, Lisa Sue has a cute song. This is sort of a story song. So, kids, this one's especially for you. So listen carefully to the words of her song. God's children don't have numbers. Listen. I'm number 22. I play in soccer. I'm never more than second when we play any game. You call me at five 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 seven 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 eight. Never mind your number. What's your name? God's children don't have numbers. He calls me by my name. And though he has a million kids, no two are just the same. When God hears me pray, he does not say that's number sixteen thousand thirty three. No, I believe. Pray the angels hear the Father say, Hush, Lisa's talking to me. My locker's number 4211. At school, my desk is number 5 and back of Mary Jane. I can't recall if 80 is my IQ or my weight. Never mind your number. What's your name? God's children don't have numbers. He calls me by my name. And though he has a million kids, no two are just the same. When God hears me pray, he does not say. That's number 16,033. No, I believe that when I pray, the angels hear the Father say, Hush, Lisa's talking to me. 
Thank you, Lisa. Isn't that great to know that God cares that much about us? How does he do it? We, we can't understand that because we've got just little peanut brains. But God is so great. Great is the Lord. He is a great God. And I want our choir to respond by singing that chorus that's become quite popular today. Great is the Lord. Listen as they sing this for you. Thank you, choir. Great is the Lord. And you know, telling boys and girls about the greatness of our great God. That's been the ministry of Children's Bible Hour since 1942. Mary has to come and say a poem. This is a go along with the offering poem. Listen carefully to these words. A big silver dollar and a little brown cent rolling along together went rolling along on the smooth sidewalk when the dollar remarked, for dollars do talk. You poor little cent, you cheap little mite, I'm bigger than you and twice as bright. I'm worth more than you a hundredfold, and written on me in letters bold is the motto drawn from a pious creed, in God we trust, which all may read. Yes, I know, said the cent, I'm a cheap little mite, I know I'm not big, nor good, nor bright. And yet, said the cent with a meek little sigh, you don't go to church as often as I.
choir. I want them to sing another song right now. We just recorded this Friday. You're going to hear it on the broadcast in about six weeks. And it's such a cute song, but I want you to get involved. And kids, I want you to sing, God is great, God is good. He kept his promise like he said he would. Listen to this bright song. cute little chorus and I hope it'll just kind of go through and through your mind so we want to teach it to you stand up now you don't have to sing that middle part the blessed and the holy part but we want you to sing that little pair you know the little uh, chorus each time God is great God is good he kept his promise like he said he would God is great God is good blessed be the name of the Lord all right you think you can handle that I think you can all right here we go sing along with the choir this time God is great singing. Thank you. You may be seated. I hope all, all week, I hope you're driving down the road, you know, God is great. God is good. I hope that just kind of gets, because that, that is a good thing to think about, the greatness of God. Our good sound man, Dan Baumgarten, by the way, he works full-time in Grand Rapids, but he travels every weekend that we go out, and we go out twice a month, he travels as our sound man, and he takes a week of his vacation to travel with us on our summer tour. And boy, we are glad he did because putting all the sound together for a program like this is something special. Dan, have you got time to queue up uh, Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho? They're going to do this with the soundtrack, all right? And, we're, and they're going to sing right along with the soundtrack. There's a lot of older songs on this album with kind of a new setting, a new background that really makes you want to sing it. And uh, this is a song all about Joshua who fought the battle at Jericho. All right, listen as the kids tell us this story in song. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho.
the walls came tumbling down flat. That's on our album, Good Old Gospel Singing. Hey kids, I want you to do one more song. This is from our newest album, songs from here, there, and everywhere. Now listen to the words, because you're going to sing when they're done. Hallelujah, anyhow. I heard this first in the Caribbean. I think you'll like this little chorus, and I want you to learn it. All right, you be ready to sing along. The kids are going to sing it for you first. Here we go. chorus that really is one that can just sing its way into your heart all right hallelujah anyhow i'll never let my troubles get me down when my troubles come my way hold my head up high and say oh boy that's what we usually do isn't it no we say hallelujah anyhow here we go hallelujah anyhow there's a little beat at the beginning hallelujah anyhow i'll never i'll never let my troubles get be seated. Jonathan, I want you to come. And uh, he has a song. How many of you are brothers and sisters? Let me see your hands. If you are a brother or a sister. If you are a brother or a sister. All right, put your hands down. How many of you have never, ever, 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 ever fought with your brothers or sisters? Let me see your hand. Oh, yeah. The only ones who raise their hands are those who have no brothers and sisters. All right, now listen. I want you to be real quiet. Shh. Shh. A lot of you are talking. And, oh, that's a lot better, isn't it? Yes. Yes. All right. Can you do your scripture now? Yes. All right. But now ye put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy communication out of your mouth. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. I have a naughty temper, it dwells inside of me. As long as it is sleeping, I'm good as I can be. Now I don't know exactly just how it got its start, but it makes me so unhappy to have it in my heart. It makes me oh so naughty when it gets out of place. It flares up like a Jesus asked him to change my heart and now I feel quite certain that God will do his part now if you have this problem I'll tell you what to do just give your temper to the Lord and he will help you too the secret there's the secret brothers and sisters that have trouble fighting give your temper to the Lord this is a song that's on our new album songs from here there and everywhere and on this first verse you're gonna clap I have these hands 
Right? Practice. Ah, ah. Just four. Ah. Oh, there's always a few. I first heard this at Tennessee Temple down at Highland Park Baptist Church. 2,000 kids singing this song, I Have These Hands, I Have This Tongue. I liked it. We put it on our new album. The kids are going to sing it, but you're going to help. All right? Get your hands ready. All right? You ready? Pastor Wheeler, you got your hands ready back there? All right. Here we go. Mrs. Wheeler? All right. All right. Here, I'm going to tell on you. All right. Here's the second verse to this song. Their choir hasn't had a chance to really practice this verse too much, but I think you can help, though. You all got a tongue? Let me see your tongue. You all got a tongue? All right. I have this tongue. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Here we go. cute song, but it has a good message. Whoever took my picture right when I went, blah, 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 I'd like to see you afterwards. You're gonna blackmail me with that one, I think. But you know something, that, that song has a real good message. That's why we've got it on our new album, Songs from Here, There, and Everywhere. Now we're gonna do uh, kind of a, a, a package of songs that are gonna go just from one to the other. And then we're gonna have a story in a few minutes, all right? Because we always wind up our broadcast with a story. We wind up our concerts with a story as well. Now first, Carl and Melissa are going to come. Now in a few minutes you're going to hear from Pam and Dan, but uh, Pam is graduating this year, and so we got to start getting some new duetters going. <laughs> Carl and Melissa are going to start this package of music singing a new name written down in glory. Listen. Bye. 
Yes, he did. He did. Oh, you know what? I, I wish I could go up to each one of you, look you right in the eye and say, do you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Have you invited him in? If so, I'm going to see you in heaven someday. You know what? I, I enjoy living. I really do. But do you know what? I am looking forward to heaven. And our second cousins are going to come to sing a song. It's called Heaven for Me. I want you to listen to these words and ask yourself this question. Am I indeed ready for heaven? Listen. Well, Sherilyn, it's getting kind of late. How, how are you tonight? Uncle Charlie, after hearing all this nice music, I feel fantastic. Well, I'm glad you feel so great. Do you always feel fantastic? Well, no. Sometimes I feel really upset. Oh. Like when my little brother practices his cutting and my favorite coloring book. Well, I can imagine. But can you still praise the Lord even when you're upset? Yes, no matter how I feel, I can still praise the Lord because the sound of his music 
is in my heart. Well, I'm glad you've got that sound of music in your heart. Will you share some of those sounds of music with us? Yeah. All right, you share some of those with us, okay? Praise the Lord, bless his name, hallelujah. Short days. Be the one for whom Christ died. For He took my sins away. So I'm living in His love. Love I never knew before. See the shape of Calvary, which reminds me Christ is free. Do you know that Jesus died? Again in three short days, be the one for whom Christ died. For He took my sins away. So I'm moving in His love, love I never knew before. See the shape of Calvary, which reminds me grace is free. All right. <laughs> All right. Ah, she's, she's getting warmed up as the night goes along. You must have taken a nap this afternoon. See, now Stacy, Stacy's her special friend who's been her mother, like her mother this week, and traveled with her. And I heard Stacy talking to her about a nap. So did you take a nap today? You didn't? Man, you ought to hear her when she takes a nap. <laughs> Oh, we're grateful to the Lord for the way he has supplied the boys and girls for our ministry. Well, right now, we're going to kind of wind down. We, I, we've kept you a while. We really have. But uh, we enjoy ourselves, and we trust that you enjoy it. Pam and Dan are coming back to sing one more song, and uh, then we're going to have a story. The story is a very clear, very clear presentation of the gospel. You know if you listen to our program, either our story time program or our half hour program or our keys for kids program we don't pull any punches we give the gospel and you're going to hear a gospel story tonight it's an exciting story so don't go away but i want you to quiet down kids get as quiet as you can and listen to this beautiful song let them know tell them jesus loves them so listen i 
We are going to present a story that is very clearly going to explain the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not going to be able to go out those doors and say you did not hear a gospel message because you're going to hear one right now. Now, it's a short story, but oh, it's such a good one, and I want you to listen carefully to every part of the story. I'm hoping that you'll enjoy what you're going to hear. I'm going to be a grandpa. I can do a grandpa's job pretty well these days because I am one. And uh, Gloria's going to be, she's Mrs. Trump, she has two in the choir, and she's also the mother of Melissa, and she's been a big help on tour as uh, one of the moms. And then Josh is coming from the choir to help. Mr. Ken's going to play some organ music to get us from one scene to the next, and uh, I'll be a few things other than Grandpa, too. Dan's going to feed in some sound effects. We're going to do this story just like we would in our studio. And when it's time to wash the dishes, you'll hear the dishes being washed, and when the car drives up, you'll hear that, and I hope you'll enjoy it, but much more than enjoying it, I hope you'll listen carefully to the message of the story. Will you do that? Listen. Our story today, written especially for the Children's Bible Hour by Barbara Westberg, is entitled, No trespassing. Tim Blair and his mother live on the outskirts of Plainsville in a small rented house. Since Tim's father died, Mrs. Blair has worked and Tim had to spend many hours alone until, well, let's listen to what happened. I'll help you with the dishes tonight, Mom. Thank you, Tim. I'll appreciate some help. Tell me about your day, Tim. What did you do? Nothing much. I wish we had some neighbors. I know. Oh, Mr. Crossley isn't much of a neighbor. Why, he sure isn't. Why, he's got no trespassing signs on every other fence post. Well, not quite that many, Tim. But I'll admit, he isn't very neighborly. Listen, Tim, what's that? Sounds like a dog to me. I'll go look. Oh, you poor little pooch. You look so cold and hungry. Be careful, Tim. He might bite you. Not this little fellow. Look, Mom, the poor thing. We better feed him. Well, I don't know. Oh, Mom, look at him. We better bring him in out of the cold. Look how wet he is. He's shivering. Now, Tim, I don't think we... Mom, we can't leave him out here. No, I suppose not. Well, bring him in, Tim. We'll fix him a bed and some food. For tonight, tomorrow you must find his owner. There, there, old fellow. We're going to take care of you. Say, you'd be kind of cute if you were cleaned up. What kind of dog is he, Mom? Oh, I'd say he's a mixture, Tim. Probably just a stray that someone brought out here and dumped. Oh, I hope so. You hope so? Sure. If he doesn't belong to anyone, then I can keep him. Can't I? Can't I, Mom? Oh, Tim. Another mouth to feed? We can't afford a dog. He won't eat much, Mom. He's such a little pup. Oh, please... Please, please, Mom, let me keep him. Well, let's not worry about it tonight. Tomorrow we'll try to find his owner and, well, we'll see. <laughs> well, no one claimed Pudge, as Tim had named the dog, and he was so much company for Tim that Mrs. Blair agreed to let him stay. Besides... She kind of liked him, too. Hi, 
Kutch, where's Tim? Oh, here he comes. Knew he couldn't be far behind you. Get back, Pudge. Let me unlatch the gate. My, what a welcoming committee you are. Hi, Mom. Did you have a hard day? Not too bad, son. Let's sit out here on the porch for a bit before I fix supper. What did you and Pudge do after school? Oh, we went exploring along the creek. Pudge got into a patch of briars. Boy, was he a mess. Oh, I can imagine. Took me an hour to get them all out. Better walk somewhere else tomorrow. Oh, that reminds me. Madge Watson was telling me today that Mr. Crossley has been losing some of his chickens. He's really upset about it. Probably a coyote. Yes, or a stray dog. Well, it wasn't Pudge, if that's what you mean. I know, but because he can't get out of this yard unless I let him out. I know. But Madge said Mr. Crossley was warning everyone to keep their dogs tied because he intends to shoot any he finds on his place. His no trespassing signs apply to dogs, too. And he'd really shoot him. He's just that mean. But Pudge knows he's not to go there. Every time we walk in that direction, I make him stay away from Mr. Crossley's property. He's a pretty smart dog. Well, I hope so. It's understandable that Mr. Crossley is so upset. He has a lot of time and, and money invested in his chickens. Well, Pudge hasn't been around his old chickens, and he won't be either. I just wanted you to know, Tim, so you would stay away. Oh, I will. I hardly ever go around there anyway. Let's go fix supper. I'm hungry. <laughs> Several days later, Tim arrived home from school and whistled to let Pudge know he was home. He found the gate open. He called for Pudge and got no reply. Then he spotted a package inside the screen door. The postman must have put it there and forgot to latch the gate. And Pudge? Pudge was gone. But Tim figured he'd be back. He probably just went exploring. He wouldn't go far. Just down along the creek or over to Mr. Cross. Oh, no. Mr. Crossley's. Tim knew he'd have to go find him right away. Aha! Uh -huh. So there he is. I knew if I waited long enough, he'd show up. Headed right for my chicken pens, he is. I'll teach that pup to kill my chickens. Where's my gun? Here it is. I gotta hurry out before I kill another chicken. I'm gonna get a good aim. I don't intend to hit one of my chickens, hornery pup. I'll teach him. Punch! Punch! Uh, stop, Mr. Crossley! Stop! Don't you punch! Ethan, oh, oh, no! Oh, no! That crazy kid got right in between me and the dog! Oh, no! What have I done? What have I done? And, and that's the story, Mrs. Blair. I, I sure didn't mean to shoot your boy. He just jumped right in the way, trying to save his dog. Oh, thank the Lord. It was only a flesh wound. The doctor said Tim should be able to go home in a, in a couple of days. I, I just feel awful about this, just awful. I've done some mean things, but I... I ain't never shot a kid before. I never felt like this in my whole life. I've been thinking. Pudge trespassed, but Tim was wounded. You know, Mr. Crossley, this, this whole thing reminds me of myself. You, Mrs. Blair, I, I, I don't quite understand. I trespassed against God, Mr. Crossley. I sinned. I knew better, but I did it anyway, and I was doomed to die. Then Jesus stepped into my place. Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions. That's in the 53rd chapter. I trespassed, and to save me, Jesus was wounded. Well, I've done lots of mean things in my life, Mrs. Blair. Lots of transgressing, I guess you'd say. You suppose the Lord would be willing to, to take my place? He already did, Mr. Crossley. He took your place on Calvary's cross. He took the blame and, 
and punishment for all your transgressions. He was wounded for you. I didn't realize anyone cared much for me. Sure didn't think anyone loved me much as Tim loves that dog. Jesus does, Mr. Crossley. Jesus loves you. Yes, ma'am. I I believe he does. Now you run along and see about your boy. I'll be back in the morning. I got to go home now and talk to the Lord while I'm taking those no trespassing signs down. together shall we (coughs) heads bowed and eyes closed we have tried to show you the way that you can know you are saved you have sinned I have sinned the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, indeed, we have sinned. We have transgressed against God. But Jesus Christ took our punishment. He took our place. But now, and this is a very, very important thing, it's up to us to personally receive what Jesus Christ did for us. It's not enough that Jesus died on that cross. You and I need to make it personal to ourselves. We need to say, Lord, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I confess to you that I am a sinner. I transgressed and I receive what you did for me. Have you done that? Were you able to sing a while ago, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God? If not, right this very moment, you can become a member of the family of God. Before I turn it back to Pastor, I would like to just lead you in a prayer. And if you have never invited the Lord Jesus to be your Savior, you can do that right now, right while you're sitting here. Just pray this prayer with me. Silently, the Lord can read your very thoughts. And whether you're a boy or a girl or a young person or an adult, as in one of our services just recently, an adult raised his hand to say, Uncle Charlie, I prayed that prayer with you. I invite you to pray that prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know I have done bad things. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again from the dead for me. And right now, I tell you I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to forgive my sins and come into my heart and life and be my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, if you really meant it, Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever, that includes you, shall call upon the name of the Lord, that's what you just did, shall be saved. Now, it's very important that you tell somebody about what you've done. I'll be down here in front be glad to shake hands with anybody who'd like to come by and say hi. But, oh, if you'd like, you just take my hand and say, Uncle Charlie, I prayed that prayer with you. Maybe you'd like to tell Mom and Dad about it or a Sunday school teacher. If you want more help, Pastor Cannon will be here. I'll be here. We'll be glad to help you further. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this night. Thank you for the invitation that's been given so that we can share in this very special evening on this Father's Day. And I pray especially for any who may have prayed that prayer just now and invited you to be their Savior. May they know in their own heart of hearts that you have heard that prayer and you have come in to live in their hearts and lives forever. But Lord, as we go out these doors, help us to remember that we are going out into our mission field. 
Help us to realize that we are the only Bible that some people will read. Help us to be honest and true as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, for we pray it in his name. Amen. Now, parents, can I say something very strong in, in closing? We met the radio station managers from this area. Now, they provide fine programming for your children to listen to. Now, it's up to you to help the kids listen. On Saturday morning, may I ask you to do something for me? Turn off the television set. Will you do that? Turn off the television set and tune in to some of the good programs. Now listen, any red-blooded kid given a choice between TV on Saturday morning and our program is going to choose TV unless they've been better educated. But you see, you are responsible for what your children watch and what they listen to. I get so angry when I get letters from adults Parents will say, I love your program, but I can't get my seven-year-old to listen because they're sitting in front of the television set. I've had letters like that. You should see the replies I send to them. <laughs> Not very nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I often include the advice that my predecessor, Aunt Bertha, and some of you, I'm sure, how many of you used to listen when Aunt Bertha was director? Yes, I know. She used to say there's two switches for the television set. One's on the set, the other one's on the tree in the backyard. If the one doesn't work, use the other one. And that's good advice. Seriously, though, parents, the stations in this area need your support. And I encourage you to tune in and listen. All right, let's stand together. We're going to sing our theme song together. And then you're going to be dismissed. I'll be down here in front. Take advantage of some of the literature as you go. All right, here we go. Sing it. Boys and girls for Jesus, Oh uh-huh.